Guy, Colonel Mini here. Welcome to lesson four of how to fly. We have dealt with pitch and roll control. Now we're going to look at yaw control. This will ensure that you have coordinated flight when you're straight in level or in turns. Yaw is the tendency for the nose and tail to go left and right. This is controlled by the rudder. I don't use a set of rudder pedals for this game, I use the twist grip on my joystick. Ideally, we want to be flying in a straight line, creating as little drag as possible. But there is no external reference to tell us that we're flying in a straight line. The instrument we use that tells us we are flying in a coordinated fashion is either the turn and bank or the turn and slip indicator. It works very simply, just like a spirit level in the building industry. As we fly, the forces act on the little ball and either skid it to the outside or slip it down to the inside. Our job is to try to keep the little ball in the center at all times. Control is simple. If the ball is to the left of center, we step on it with the left rudder. If the ball is to the right, we step on it with the right rudder. It's an extremely sensitive instrument and really needs a delicate touch. Usually, as we go into a left bank, we will require a little bit of left rudder. The horizon reference is passing through one point on the nose of the aircraft, which means I'm not changing the control inputs and that makes it much easier to control the ball. If you're having difficulty holding the nose on the horizon, I suggest you look at lessons one and two. And in a right hand turn, we'll need a little bit of right rudder. Once again, notice the horizon passing through essentially the same point on the top of the nose. It's a lot more difficult than it looks, but it needs to become second nature to you. And all the same principles apply in a steep turn to the left. Above the turn and slip indicator is the heading or directional indicator. We're going to come out on a heading of north. In some aircraft with aileron or rudder trim tabs, we might be able to aerodynamically control and coordinate the flight better. But this aircraft, the BF-109, is hampered by only having the elevator trim control. Lesson 3 covers the importance of uh, trimming the aircraft correctly in great detail. Let's look now at turn radius. The faster you go, the wider the turn. It's also dependent upon aircraft design. Let's look at turn radius versus speed. We're going to use this small round lake as the center of our turning circle. We'll hold the same angle of bank and turn at 500, then we'll do a turn at 250. Notice at this high speed how wide the radius is. It's the small round lake on the other side of the oblong one. Look at the radius now at 250. And now we'll slow it down to 200. At this stage we are entering the slow flight characteristics and you'll note that by these leading edge slats which are extended. As we are now flying just above the stall 
we must make sure that we are flying in coordinated flight because an uncoordinated aeroplane will stall earlier. Now look at the turn radius at 200. I'm now going to extend 20 degrees of flap and bring it down to about 160. Even though we're in a nice coordinated turn, the left wing wants to stall. And there it goes. Let's try a steeper angle of bank and more power. We always want to have the energy advantage in a dogfight, which means we always seek to have an altitude and speed advantage over our opponents. But there is one time when this is not an advantage, and that is when you're at extremely low level in a turning fight with another aircraft. If you try to leave that circle, the enemy will be on your tail. In this instance, whoever can fly the tightest circle will be able to get inside his opponent and shoot him down. And the slower you can fly, the tighter the circle. In order to understand the intricacies of flying in slow flight close to the ground, I have two videos on the subject. Practice flying in circles around a static object like this lake. If you can hold your airspeed, hold your altitude, hold your angle of bank, and have a trimmed aircraft, then you know how to fly an airplane. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you'll enjoy some of my other tutorials. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please like it or subscribe. Or if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, please 